all the tools you love from Vimeo. Now for live streaming. Vimeo Live, professional all live streaming for your next Vimeo. event. Now for live streaming. Hey guys, what's up? It's Moz here and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I'm actually going to be showing you guys the best OBS settings for streaming your content, whether that's on Facebook, Twitch TV, YouTube gaming, or really any streaming service. Ever since I uploaded my best settings for recording with OBS, I've been getting a ton of comments asking me to do a streaming tutorial as well. And my best recording settings video actually has been doing incredibly well with over like 70,000 views in just over one month. So hopefully this video does the same. And before I get started, I just want to say be sure to hit that like button, share this video with your friends, and go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you aren't already, because I am on my way to 40,000 subscribers and all hope is appreciated. But other than that, let's get on with the video. Alright guys, so first things first is you obviously just want to go ahead and open up OBS Studio, but if you don't already have it for some reason and you're still on this video, then I will have a link in the description below on where you can go ahead and download it. But once you do open yours up, you'll see that I've removed all my sources and scenes right here so that I can just start like a fresh project for you guys and avoid any confusion. But once you're here, yours might have like a white theme on it instead of like a black or gray one that I currently have. But don't worry, all you have to do to change that is just go ahead and head over to the settings button right here. Make sure you're under the general tab, hit theme, and then change it from default to dark. And once you do that, just go ahead and click on apply and okay. But since mine's already on dark, I don't have to change anything. But personally, I feel like default can be hard on the eyes at times, so I always make sure to change mine to the dark theme instead and that's really just personal preference you can keep it on the default one it's not really going to make a difference with the performance of your streams anyways for this video we're going to want to stay in the output tab right here as this is where most of our streaming settings are going to be found but once you're here you want to make sure that you change your output mode from simple to advanced so that yours looks the same as mine does and so since we're only messing with streaming settings we're going to want to stay in the streaming tab but if you do want to see like the recording tab and all that good stuff then check out my other video if you are interested because the link will be in the description below and that's just going to teach you the best recording settings for OBS in the year 2017. But anyways, let's get back on track. So something I really enjoy about OBS is that it allows users to record and stream in multiple audio tracks. So these are what you call audio tracks right here. And there's a pretty big chance that you're only going to need to use one of the audio tracks, but this is a really handy tool that allows you to separate your audio in case you have multiple sound outputs at once. So an example of this would maybe be like music playing in the background, a Skype call, Twitch notifications, your microphone, etc. So if you are playing music on stream, but you don't want to have your music in the recording that you're going to be editing later, then you can split the audio and then mute that part of your audio in your video editing software whether that's Vegas, Premiere Pro, or really whatever you use. It's a really handy tool but there's a pretty big chance that you're only going to need one of these. And next up we've got the encoder. So you might have multiple options right here but the one that you really want to stick with is just going to be x264. And I really don't recommend trying to change that up whatsoever but from there make sure that you hit the checkbox on the enforced streaming service encoder settings and once you've done that we can move on to the rescale output. And this is where I want you guys to actually really pay attention to what I have to say and if you're streaming on twitch do not and i repeat do not stream in 1080p no matter how much someone tells you that it's going to make a difference and i say this because it literally is going to make zero difference on twitch because there are certain bit rates which you have to stream in in order to keep up with the higher quality resolution so if you're trying to stream at 1080p 60 or even 1080p 30 it's not going to make a difference whatsoever if you're going to be at the 3500 max bit rate that twitch allows so if you plan on streaming somewhere else like youtube gaming where they allow upwards of like 10,000 for your bit rate then that's when you would want to do 1080p at 60 fps which would actually make a difference otherwise just go ahead and check the rescale output button like I have right here and from there just type in 1280x720 or you can click the drop down and pick it from here but mine's not showing up because I have a 21 by 9 monitor so just go ahead and type that in and you should be good to go anyways guys once you're done with all that good stuff what you want to do is make sure that your rate control is set to CBR instead of any of the other options and from there we can move on to the custom buffer size I already talked about the bit rate just keep it at 3500 but lower it down if your stream is lagging and that might have to do with like your upload speed so I recommend having like an upload speed between like three to anything above three really and then you can keep this but if yours is lower then just go ahead and lower that down and if you're not sure what your, what your upload speed is you can go to speedtest.net run the test and it will tell you your download speed your upload speed and your ping but from there we can actually move on to the custom buffer size and this is more of a personal preference which really depends on how good your internet speed is but I currently don't use one so you can go ahead and skip over that if you'd like to but for a keyframe interval we definitely want to keep this at two and next up we've got our CPU preset and this is another part where I want you guys to actually actually pay attention to what I have to say. And this section is solely dependent on how good of a processor and overall computer you have. If you're too lazy, then I've got a direct link in the description below, which will take you to that video. And then you can come back here once you're done. And for the audio tab, 